Okay, everybody, welcome. Good evening. I'm really excited to uh, to to be here. Uh, you know, I've been waiting all day. Uh, I've been talking to several of you, and uh, some of our families are they're on their way, creative permitting. Uh, they better join us tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, this evening, it's already dark here in San Jose, California. Uh, it's November 11th, 2020. Um, you know, we're celebrating American Indian Alaska Native Heritage Month, and also today is Veterans Day. And uh, we wanted just to take the time to, to thank uh, all the contributions throughout uh, Native history, uh, throughout Native country, throughout this whole Western Hemisphere. Uh, indigenous peoples, Native peoples have been contributing to not only to humanity, but every aspect of science, in social services, uh, in medicine, in technology. Uh, there's so much that uh, our Native history has provided, uh, is including our, you know, our, our Indigenous and Native uh, veterans. Um, you know, traditionally we know of the, the Navajo code, code talkers, but uh, there's also the Comanches and many, many tribes, the Cherokee, the Choctaw, uh, there's also the Lakota, the Hopi, um, also the Crow people. There's many, many Indigenous peoples throughout, uh, throughout Native country who've served uh, are, that are serving today, men and women. Um, so we want to thank them for their service, uh, especially during these times, during the holidays. Um, and also our, our warriors today, you know, for those of you who joined us last week for our, our, our workshop, Indigenous, um, Digital Indigenous Wellness, uh, we talked about the, the ongoing uh, challenges and barriers with, with colonization and globalization. So we have our Indigenous and Native brothers in Alaska, all the way here in, in the States, and even in Central and South America who are holding the front um, for, you know, uh, for our way of life, for uh, respect of our indigenous lands and our sovereignty, and just for also our warriors, we want to give thanks, our veteran warriors, for protecting our, our women and our, our family members and this and our traditions, our elders. So with that, celebrating American Indian and Alaskan you know, Native Heritage Month, we want to thank our special guests here today. Really, really excited. Uh, let me check here real quick to see who else needs to get um, need to admit here. Okay, we got. Okay, cool. Um, so before we move on, I just wanted to um, go to our next slide here. Give me one second. Um, So my name is uh, Iwi Papali. Uh, people in the community know me as Iwi. My name uh, literally means feather of many colors. I am descended from both my mother and my father's side, Mishika, Pame Guamare, Wiradika Nation Tribes of Mexico. I'm also project coordinator for Traditional Path to Wellness. And this whole series was created on behalf of our planning committee. And uh, we have various departments that we're working with, our, our dietitian, nutritionist. We have our, our fitness coordinators, Marissa, Ruben, our dietitian, we have many different departments working with us to create uh, this, this series. And um, I also want to thank our, our the hospitality. I'm actually in Anisita's home right now. So we want to thank her and her family. Um, and also for, for providing our, our connection to our special guests here today. And um, I want to thank our, our, our local uh, tribe. We want to pay respects and, and, and gratitude and generosity for the Mawekma Alona tribe. This is the homelands of, of our local uh, community here. And so traditionally the Abor Aboriginal homeland of the Mawekma Alona includes the following counties, San Francisco, San Mateo, most of Santa Clara, Alameda, Contra Costa, and portions of Napa, Santa Cruz, Solano, and Santa Cruz. So, you know, traditionally, you know, it's important for us, you know, you know, we are still an occupied territory. In this particular situation is that they've been striving to to be recognized as a tribe and they're doing a lot of wonderful uh contributions to our com local community here throughout the state and and throughout native country and so we want to take the time to to acknowledge them because traditionally these homelands this is where they raise their families this is where they traditionally hunted and fished and gathered and uh, had their ceremonies and maintained and protected the land so we always do our best in, in a very humble way to introduce and to remind that, um, you know, we are at their home and to teach us that, uh, that you know, to walk a little more in a humble way 
and to remember that. So we want to thank them. And as we move forward, um, I'd like to uh, uh, call in our special guest. Uh, we have a special guest here today, and we're very honored uh, for Delia de la Rosa. She's one of our community elders here in the Bay Area, and uh, her full name is Delia de la Rosa Navarro, was born in Portland, Oregon, and raised in San Jose, California. She is from the Huichol tribe of Mexico. Delia has been married for 54 years to her husband, Ernie. She has two daughters and eight grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. She has been an active part of our Bay Area Native community for many years. We are honored to have her here today to share some words of encouragement along with an opening and clear, uh, closing prayers for our workshop. So it's a big part of our community that we maintain, um, you know, that, that connection and that relationship with our elders to guide us. And especially during these times of COVID-19, and this is one of the reasons why we created this workshop series, to create that inspiration for our community, and especially during um, Native American Heritage and Alaska Native Heritage Month. So, uh, Delia, would you be so kind to um, to share a prayer for us? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, un if you can unmute yourself, and uh, we'll be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for honoring me with this. And um, I'd like to thank Grandmother for all that she gives us, all the strength that she gives us during this time that is so hard on so many of us. I'd like to say that we continue to pray for all the lives that have, we have lost during this pandemic situation. That we continue to pray for our children so that they learn to grow up with the respect that we want them to have and to honor people, all the people around them. I'd like to um, say thank you to this community for continuing to have these programs and to be able to have this technology, to have these meetings so that we can still see each other at times and still connect with each other. So I say to Grandma, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being my life. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for giving me the strength to continue to do what I do, to pray the way that I pray. Thank you to all of you who are all so, to, so supportive of each other. And I want to say thank you to the Indian Health Center Services for what they give us and that Without them, where would we be? So let us continue to honor our families and honor our neighbors and our all of us that we embrace each other during these really hard, hard times because changes are coming and the changes will be very different for our children, for our grandchildren. It's it'll be very different. So I just want to say thank you, Grandmother, for holding us each in your arms and comforting us as you embrace us and sing beautiful songs to us. Oh. 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 Thank you very much, Delia. We really appreciate your generosity for your prayer. Um, and with that, we welcome this next transition as we move into our our special guests um, i'd like to do uh, uh, a quick housekeeping uh, let me bring up the screen here so in terms of our zoom etiquette uh, it's kind of like self-explanatory here so um, if you would be so kind for those of you probably first time using zoom i know it could be a little you know, technology challenge, a little some barriers there, but on your lower left hand side, we have a mute button and a start video. We are recording right now and we do plan to, to post this video on our Indian Health Center Facebook page for our community and also our uh, YouTube uh, channel. So if, if you would prefer either to keep your name or you can, you could also have an option to rename um, your, basically your picture, the area of your square. Um, if you don't want, if you wanted to remain anonymous or just wanted to be mindful 
of, um, of that. And again, um, please, we want to encourage you to, there's a, to share an acknowledgement of something you hear. You can clap your hands. You can also raise your hand. We have a, a chat button. And uh, Nico and Buster will explain more what, what to expect for the workshop. So we, we just want to encourage uh, to be mindful, uh, to keep your, again, uh, keep your mic turned off unless uh, Buster and Nico request uh, for uh, questions or, or interaction. So we want to do that. And then we're going to come out of here to our next page. For some reason, it's not activating. Let's try this. Um, so now we're going to do is our roll call. So traditionally out of protocol, it's important that, you know, we take the time to get to know who our community is and who's present. And uh, considering the time uh, allocated for our workshop, we want to give as much time as we can for our presenters, but I still want to make an effort to acknowledge all our community members who are here. And we have a quite extensive, a lot of families joining us throughout California. We got Northern California, uh, throughout the Bay, San Jose, Milpitas. So if you're there, wave your hand, like, hey, I'm in the house. <laughs> uh, we got San Jose, Santa Cruz, Milpitas, Sacramento. Uh, we have all the way to Linwood, Washington. If you're in the house, we got Casablanca, San Jose, Norwalk, New Mexico. So we definitely wanted to take the time to, to acknowledge you, um, you know, because th this is, was created, this whole series was created for you and for your families. Uh, we want you to walk away with that, that good feeling, that good spirit, and to have some resources at the end uh, because our presenters are really excited to be here. And so uh, we also want to uh, take the time to let you know that for those of you who participate and take healthy risks, uh, I'm gonna keep track who's speaking so that way we throw you in a raffle. So at the end, we're gonna do a raffle and we're gonna send that to you. So we might not have enough time to actually do the raffle in, in place, but we will send that prize to you. Last week we had Raquel Santos. She won an awesome positive affirmation a journal book. So we'll see what we have for surprise uh, for this series. Um, and then finally, um, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. Um, we're very, very honored to have them. And I just wanted to take the time to introduce uh, Leroy, who also goes by Buster Silva. Uh, he's from the Pueblo of Laguna. He's an active husband and dad who loves to travel before COVID-19. He enjoys virtual walks on the beach and drinking his coffee black. I love working with groups and communities to reflect on their wellness journey and to have fun. We also have Nico Jerome Silva. She's uh, also, uh, helps facilitate and lead education around powwow wellness, and she's a lead. She's from the Otto, Miss, uh, Missouri, Missouri, Choctaw. Uh, I'm a mom, she, she's a, a mompreneur who loves to help others reach their potential by utilizing their cultural knowledge. She's grown up in the Bay Area of California. Yay. Yeah. Staying connected to her roots of the plains, very important in navigating urban life. Aside from homeschooling, she loves art and boba tea shop hopping. I love, she loves to travel and powwows. So it's with great honor and privilege. Uh, let's give a big uh, acknowledgement on behalf of the community. Tradition in our workshops, we say you're worthy. So we say you're worthy. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to, um, to, to Buster and Nico. Uh, the stage is yours and then I'll be, you know, taking track of questions and stuff like that. And um, thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you. I was on mute. Awesome, everybody. Welcome. I am, we are sending a bunch of warm hugs and uh, some love from Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, home of the Gathering of Nations, home of where it's Christmas all the time, red chili and green chili, um, and also to where we raise our kids. So uh, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And thank you very much for spending the time you have with us tonight. Because you could have been sleeping, you could have been in front of the TV, but I'm very happy that you are here with us. So, um, so thank you very much for that. You kind of took off some things from our list, so that's that's a good thing. So, um, Nico, do you want to share anything? Um, I just want to say thank you. I want to say hi to everybody in the Bay Area, my hometown, San Jose, um, um, and I. It was Oto, so it's Oto, Missouri, and Choctaw tribes. Um, 
So I just want to say hello. Hope everybody had a great uh, Veterans Day, uh, however you spent it celebrating or remembering people in your family, friends. Yes. And again, thank you very much. And thank you, uh, young fella, for being here. I think uh, Denoria, Denora Flores, is that your, your son or nephew or what have you? Thank you very much for being here. You are awesome already for just, you know, spending time with us. So, uh, so before we get started, I just wanted to um, let you know that, uh, you know, we're here to have some fun. So, you know, make sure you have some water next to you um, and, you know, feel free to share. So don't feel that you, you, you know, you can raise your hand at any time, ask us questions, things like that. So we want to make this as interactive as possible. So you're going to get up at one point in time. Um, as you can see, we have another screen going where it says Family Indigenized Thrive. I'll be doing some active breaks here in a little bit. So you'll be, we'll be uh, splitting some screens. So just to give you a heads up, okay? So uh, I'm going to share my awesome screen with you right now and uh, going into presentation mode. Okay, here we go. So a little bit about who we are. So, so again, this is my wife. And as you can see on the screen, these are our two kids. And I have an older son. His name is Chase Marchand. He lives in Washington State. Our daughter, her name is Paisley. And our little fellow there, his name is Monto. And we have another one, Bacon in the Oven, is due in fe February. So <laughs> things are about to get a little bit interesting. So thank you very much. Um, so again, my background is in um, health and wellness. I've been an athlete growing up all my life. You know, basketball is my passion. You know, running has always been a part of my life. Um, I went to school at Haskell Indian Nations University in Lawrence, Kansas, where I got to play college basketball. Came back to Albuquerque, was in education for 11 years, and now I work in community health with a pretty well-known organization called the No to Begay the Third Foundation here in, in Albuquerque. So besides that, you know, my passion again is community. So this is the reason why we develop Family Indigenized Thrive. So, um, so again, that's a little bit about me and I'd like to pass it over to uh, Nico for her to share her journey as far as wellness. <laughs> so um, I'm a medical assistant. Um, and since we have our kids at home, I've uh, taken on the role of full-time uh, homeschooling, helping them get online, um, and certainly with the pandemic uh, shelter in place, we've done quite a bit. Um, I also teach um, powwow how wellness. And so I do powwow everything. I like to incorporate it into Zumba. I teach beadwork classes, um, any kind of regalia classes. Um, both uh, my sister Anasita and I have taught together. Uh, we grew up in the Bay Area together. Um, so coming here, that was just natural to do with our kids. And so I'm just doing that full time right now. All right, so move forward. So Family Indigenized Thrive, what is it? Who are we and why are we here? So Family Indigenized Thrive, um, just, uh, it was born in 2012. So again, this is sort of like my mixtape of wherever I've been, whoever I've engaged with. So I've had positive mentors, I've had positive experience. So my take with this is just, you know, how can I give back? What can I do more outside of my nine to five job? So with this uh, family indigenized thrive, so the family part is anything um, you, you, anybody that you feel that is family, whether it's your born family or whether it's your chosen family. Because I know our dip, our, we have different family dynamics in the way that works, but anybody who's close to you, anybody who supports you, so that's what family is. So indigenize, so it, all of this isn't just for indigenous people. So indigenize, what that means is going back to the roots of who you are. So I strongly feel, my personal belief is that everybody in the world was, um, came from a place in space. So they have their own core values. They knew how to live have a good relationship with the land and things like that. So I feel that, you know, sometimes we get away from that, but now indigenizing everything is kind of going back into, um, back into the future uh, uh, in history in regard to, you know, what are those values? What are those things that I knew how to be healthy? Our ancestors were probably healthier than us because they have a better relationship with the land, with the animals and things like that, and even a better relationship with themselves. So that's what indigenize means. And also to thrive, we want you to thrive. We want our communities to thrive in everything that we are. We all have superpowers. We all want to take care of ourselves. We all want to be healthy, but let's not keep it for ourselves. Let's share it with our community. And that's the reason why we're here. And that's why Family Indigenized Thrive was developed and um, just came out of, like I said, just the, um, my, uh, our 
just our playbook as far as like what have we done in the past. So the way it breaks down is our philosophy is self connections and community. So like everything, everything starts with yourself. So you know your likes, you know your weaknesses, you know your superpowers, you know all of this stuff about yourself. Um, sometimes it takes a while for us to get reminded of who we really are. So it starts with yourself. So the next one is connections. So connections can be your, your honey, your wife, your partner, your, your sisters, your family, your, uh, your network. Anybody that's around you are those connections, whether it's a ceremonial family, whether it's your born or your given family, things like that. So that's what connections are. Anybody that you have a networking relationship with or a loving relationship with, those are your connections. And community. So whatever you feel is community, for me, my community is in Laguna. Even though we live here in Albuquerque, you know, at Laguna, our, my Pueblo will always be home. And I'm sure that's the same thing with uh, Nico is that San Jose's uh, California Bay Area will always be her home. So um, in, in regard, we had to, living here in Albuquerque, we have to find our own community. So we're pretty, pretty uh, connected with the com communities here in Albuquerque, whether it's, you know, in the indigenous community, whether it's the black community. Uh, Latina, Latinx community. So we've developed our own community here in uh, Albuquerque. So community is basically where you uh, where you hang your hat and where you do your thing. So that's what it is. Okay. So we want to get a little insight of who is in the house. Okay. Um, so you you mentioned it just a little bit, but uh, we are going to uh, go back as far as um, the. Um, so we want to know who's in the in the in the room in the zoom room so i want you to you know just muster the courage to um you know click that mute button or i'm gonna call I'm, calling you out isn't uh, isn't a bad thing but i just want to you know for you to share your voice i want to know who you are who we're talking to okay so i'm gonna go with uh let's go with yvonne so yvonne i'm gonna ask you what tribal nations do you represent? And if you were to jump on a plane tonight, where would your destination be? Where would you go? Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Maya and Apache. And if I were to go on a plane, ooh, I think <laughs> I'd want to go, ooh, either Hawaii, because <laughs> I love the beach. Hawaii, our... Actually, maybe even New Mexico. I love New Mexico. So, there we go. Thank you. All right. Uh, he would give her an extra ticket for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Yvonne. Um, let's go with uh, Denora. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, Flores. All right. My name is Denora. What was the question? Uh, the first question was... What are your tribal nations or the people you represent? And uh, if you were to jump on a plane tonight, where would you go? Okay, my name my name is Dinora Flores. This is my son Ismael. Um, I I, I represent Mashika. If I was to jump on an airplane, I'd probably go to Guadalajara. I haven't been there for like sixteen years, and I miss it so much. I miss my friends and I miss my family and I miss the weather. It's nice and warm out there. <laughs> and I'm passing it to Ismail. Um, I don't know what I represent. And if I was to go on a plane, I would definitely go to Illinois. Nice. Those are awesome destinations. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. Let's go with uh, Jasmine Gutierrez. What, who's your... Uh, Who's your people? Who are you representing? And if you were to jump on a plane tonight, where would you go? Um, my name is Jasmine Gutierrez. I am Odawa Chippewa from Michigan. Um, I actually grew up in Southern California on a reservation called Torres Martinez. And um, I've been living in LA County for 16 years now. And if I was to be able to jump on a plane, I would take me, well, my husband and I, and go to Michigan because I never been to my reservation ever. Oh, wow. I actually before this um this pandemic started, I actually last year I um I booked um to go back in August because it's uh, it's called the um, Odawa Homecoming, mm -hmm. and I was like I'm going. I booked a room. I have my flight, and I tell my family, 
we got a room. Let's go. Nice. And then all of this, all of this happened. So I'm planning to go next um, this coming August. So <laughs> that if I can jump on a plane right now, that's where I would go. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's go with, I'm picking on the people with their, uh, with their um, videos on. So it takes a lot just to click on that video and show your face. So thank you very much for showing that courage. Let's go with uh, Raquel Santos. Before you start telling stories, you're on mute. Hello. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Hi, Nico. Hi. <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we represent Chumas tribe and my dad was Mescalero Apache from New Mexico. And um, if I were to get on an airplane, I would go to Ireland. Nice. Oh. And that's only because I did a report in elementary school and all the pictures were beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this that's is how it my starts. Daughter, nice. This is Monica. Monica, where would you go if you were to jump on a plane? Where would you get? North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota. It's pretty North cold there Dakota. right now. Love the snow, yeah. I bet. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And let's go with the uh, iPhone. She looks familiar. <laughs> iPhone. Oh, did she hang up? No. Oh, I'm there, there. She. oh there she is. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. I my name is Bernadine Duma, and I am from the Pueblo of Laguna. Um, where I reside is one of our vill six villages. It's called Parahi Casablanca, and um, I am actually um, Leroy's sister. <laughs> <laughs> so um, happy to be here. And um, I think this is an exciting opportunity for both him and Nico. So I just had to say that. And um, I think if I were to get on a plane right now, I would go to Washington. So that way I can go see my nephew Chase and also get to see um, our other nephew and niece, Felicity Rose and Brody Kai. And it's such a beautiful place, you know. I've heard always heard so many good things about the area. So, all right, thank you, Byrne. Yes, she is my big <laughs> sister. So, thank you very much, Byrne, for being here. And uh, Delia, for being married fifty-four years, I think uh, you you get a free trip after this presentation. So, where would you like to go, you and your husband? Where would we go? Where would we go, Ernie? If we got a free trip, where would we go? Where would you like to go if we had a free trip? Does it say there? No, no, you just have to pick a place. Pick a place, where would you go? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. This is my husband, Ernie. What's up, Ernie? Congratulations <laughs> on being married 54 years. That is awesome. And you better um, make sure to tell uh, tell the people who are booking your flight because there's an out there's a Las Vegas, New Mexico as well. Not as bright, oh, but yeah. <laughs> so make sure you tell the uh, travel agent exactly where you want to okay. go. Okay, Nevada. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes, pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, it looks like I've uh, we've picked on people who had their uh, their videos on, so I'm gonna move forward. So what you're looking on the screen right now is just pretty much the, the rundown of our presentation. So you, you saw the fancy um, uh, flyer in front of you. So we are Family Indigenized Thrive. Again, Leroy and Buster, you feel free to call me Buster. And this is the rundown, this is the menu. So what's up? So with everything in our, um, that's, uh, and for me, it's just one of those things that, you know, what am I getting myself into? You know, what, what's on the agenda? So this is exactly why I put this together for you. So positive vibes, we shared that and you smile, you laugh and you shared some of your, um, not your personal information, but a little bit about yourself. So thank you for doing that. That's the positive vibe part. Um, so throughout this uh, presentation, you're going to be reflecting. So self connections and community, where do you see yourself with that? But also to what are those connections and your community where you reside right now? 
also too, we're going to uh, be presenting benefit uh, benefit tools. So benefit tool. So you'll need a writing utensil and a paper for this. So just know that you'll be, you'll need that uh, those materials. And we'll go into where Nico is going to talk about indigenizing indigenous foods and eating. So she'll share more about what that means mm -hmm. because you're probably saying, how can you indigenize indigenous foods? So she's going to show you how to do that. Um, and the last part of it, I'll be uh, wrapping it up, being real with yourself and family during COVID-19. So what does that mean? What are some things that we run down? And, um, you know, how can you, uh, you know, how can you make uh, some differences and changes during this, uh, you know, this time of uncertainty? Um, but pretty much, uh, thank you very much for, you know, sharing that in the prayer that uh, we do reflect and keep those people in mind that have been challenged or have passed because of um, COVID-19 and other things as well. And the last thing is investing in generational wellness. What is that? What does it look like? And what are those um, steps that you can take in order to reach that? So without further ado, we're gonna go into, um, oops. So to start off with, so look at the screen right now. So no matter what area of wellness you're talking about, so it could be physical wellness, it could be emotional, it could be intellectual, all of these things, all these, um, stuff that you see on the screen right now, history, cost, access, time, information, transportation, preferences, uh, motivation, support, all of these factors play a role. It could be a barrier. It could be a challenge to you. So no matter what you're talking about in your life, whether you want to get healthy, whether you want to, um, you know, just make some changes in your life. So these are the, some of the roadblocks or barriers that you may encounter right now or in the future. So just know they're there, acknowledge that they exist, and pretty much we're, we're here to provide you with some tools. So we're, we don't know everything. We're going to put that out right now. But we're just going to use our experiences and what we've learned and what we know right now as community members, as, you know, our past, our, our lived experience in education and our traditional way of life and things like that. We're going to share that with you, just provide you with some tools, but just to give you some insight on that. So what you're going to do now is, um, so have that paper and pencil ready here in a little bit. So this is what we call benefits. So as you can see the acronym FITS, F-I-T-S. Um, so these are the benefits. So benefits in your life can be anything. So what is the benefit of, you know, taking a shower? What are the benefits of making sure that you eat breakfast so you don't get hangry, so you, do, you don't stink, things like that. So, you know, you, there's, um, there's three squares on here. So I'm oh, square, sorry, circles, the sacred circles. So it's going to start with self, being that everything that uh, revolves around you starts with you and then the connections next to you and then your community. So you're always going to have those connections. You're always going to be a part of community wherever that may reside. Even if you move to Scotland or even if you move to Las Vegas, New Mexico, you're always going to be a part of a community. So I want you to really think about that. You're always connected to something. And the next part, this is how are you going to use this tool? So like I mentioned before, you can use this um, anywhere in your life in regard to your mind, body, and connections. Some people say, you know, uh, mind, body, and spirituality, or my mind, body, and what have you. So this is the way we think about it, is your mind, body, and connections. That's what wellness is to us. And that's the way we perceive it to everybody else. Um, and we're getting some feedback on the microphone, so if you can make sure that you're muted, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so going off of this, um, so this is the way you're going to use this tool, okay? So you're going to ask you some, a series of questions. They're not hard. They're just uh, some, some questions to reflect. And you can go as deep as you want, but tonight we are just going to use this in the means of nutrition, okay? So think about the things you eat, the, the, the drinks you put in your, in, your, in your mouth, and, you know, whether it's coffee, whether it's water, things like that, and anything that goes in your body, Think about that nutrition and how it affects you, okay? So that's how we're going to use this today. So the body, nutrition is part of your, your physical wellness. So if you look over here, this is all about you. So what are your superpowers? What are your likes? And what are your roots, okay? And down here, what are those imbalances? Imbalance can be, you know, maybe there's um, not enough time in the, in the day. And I'm going to show you something I put together yesterday that, you know, that resembles my particular uh, life right now as a father, as a, as a working dude, as a community um, uh, advocate. So all of this will, play, will make sense when I show you mine. 
So if you look over here to connections, this is your, think of this as your support. So your family, your friends, your network, your clans, your ceremonial family, your, even a connection to nature. If that's you, then put it down. So also to an imbalance in connections can be toxic people. And you know those toxic, toxic people, mama told you to stay away from them, but you didn't listen. But uh, you know, we all have those friends, we all have those family members where we have to put them on mute sometimes. Um, you know, is that don't, um, making uh, not so healthy decisions, things like that. So, you know, just acknowledging um, those people and also to relationships and et cetera. So anything that imbalances your connections, um, that's what you put down. So as you can see on the bottom here, there's a line that uh, up here will be like, sort of like the, the good things, the positives, and down here will be the imbalance in your life. So um, the assets, so the CWC is a community wellness check, okay? So think of that as this. So in your community where you reside right now, if you were to look out the window, your far as your eyes can see, that's your community, okay? So that's the way um, we're looking at this part. So community wellness check, CWC. Um, these are the assets in your community, you know, grocery stores, you know, parks, uh, things like that. Is it easy to walk on the, you know, does your lights turn on at seven o'clock in the night or doesn't it? Um, what are the needs of your community? Whether it's, uh, you know, we need, we need lights or we need uh, walkable sidewalks, things like that. So those are, um, and that goes into built environment. So built environment, our sidewalks, built environment, our walk paths, biking paths, things like that. Um, and also to another part of that is like grocery stores, you know, can you walk to the store from your, from your area? Um, is it safe? Things like that. And also to what are the imbalances in your community? So that's how we're going to use this little tool. So remember, we're going to start with self and then we're going to go with connections and community. Okay. So I want to make sure that, so, uh, you know, um, participate as much as you can. Um, again, this tool is just to help you out with, um, you know, in regard to uh, your, your wellness and how to develop that, okay? So we're going to go to the next one. So this is me, okay? So this is all me. So the way this happens is uh, for me, as far as nutrition, I feel I'm in a water challenge right now where our foundation, we're uh, challenged to drink uh, two of these or 60 ounces of water a day throughout the month of November. So my water check, my hydration is up to par. So that's something positive that's going on in my life right now. Um, mindful shopping. We Since COVID-19, we like, what can we get, you know, to uh, minimize our trips to the store, things like that. So mindful shopping, what are those things right now? So that's what we've been doing. Snacks. So Looking at healthy snacks, you know, what are, for me, it's like, um, and this is goes into um, like my, my uh, routine as far as uh, how many times do I go to the, to the pantry or to the refrigerator, things like that. So healthy snacks, we're doing well. Um, and also to fall foods. Um, the cook here has been, you know, experimenting and uses uh, fall foods, things that are available right now, and we've been eating good. Um, some of the downside, my imbalance, me personally, is breakfast because I get up, you know, it's tough since I've been working at home just to sleep in, um, sleep late until my 10 o'clock meeting. So I don't eat breakfast, uh, a good breakfast. Um, I sometimes uh, eat lunch at like two or three o'clock in the, in the day. It's like, why do I have a headache? Things like that. So that's why. And also to the temptation of takeout and coffee. So I had to big buy coffee myself so I can make it here instead of making a trip. Uh, so minimizing those trips, minimizing those, um, those takeout, um, um, you know, those tendencies. So, you know, just try to, you know, it's a treat at the end of the week. So, um, so that's that. So if you look over here, um, what are some connections? So my wife, kids, family work, um, work family programs, virtual events. So those are positive things that are going on in my life as far as connections. And connections can be, uh, um, can be uh, engagement. I, we can't gather, so for me, I feed off of people. I'd rather be, I'd rather be in person rather than a virtual meeting, um, whether to give hugs, fist bumps, things like that, to interact. That's me and that's my superpower, but now I'm like, you know, I can't do anything. So that's, that's, um, that's an imbalance in my life right now. I can't be with friends, or we can't be with friends right now. We can't be in the community. I miss hugs, I miss handshakes, uh, things like that. So those are making the imbalances in my connections. And then within the uh, community that we, that we live in right now, grocery stores, farmer's markets, uh, bike and, uh, walk and biking, and food boxes. So these are the things that, you know, we, well, that we can get in our community right now 
And if we go into the bottom part is uh, we have to drive to farms because there's none um, where we live right now. Um, and also too, being able to, um, you know, we're, we're tired of apartment living because uh, we've been talking about wanting to uh, grow our own food and things like that. So that's some, that's an imbalance that we, that we want to, um, we want to address as well. Uh, we can't gather and feast and celebrate, um, you know, there's, um, on Pueblo, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, certain ceremonies and feast days around, across the, um, uh, throughout the year that we can't go to, we can't, uh, you know, we can't gather. So we, you know, those, uh, those important times of the year have been canceled. So that's an imbalance in our life right now. And eating habits too, um, when we go home and things like that. So making sure that, that we stick to our guns in regard to our, our food intake as well. So um, moving forward, so I want you to grab your piece of paper, grab your piece of paper, and you're going to answer this question. This is yourself. So make a circle. What are your favorite foods? And answer these questions. What are your favorite foods? It, it, it's okay if you have chicken scratch. And what are some of the healthy choices that you are happy with right now? Whether it's drinking water or um, I didn't buy those hot Cheetos at the store today or you know i've been using less salt and things like that so what are those healthy choices in your life and in the middle i drink at least 40 ounces of water a day this can go up or this can go down so 40 ounces of water is like uh five cups of eight of an eight ounce glass so if you look at um this cup it's like half of that so how many if you drink five of those then that's going to boost up to your um to what's going the good things in your life if you don't drink water at all, then you're going to go down to the bottom. And uh, so all of these, um, all of these questions that you're answering there, and you ask yourself why. So the whole goal of this tool is for you to ask your, ask those questions. Why am I, um, why am I not, uh, you know, eating breakfast or why am I not, uh, you know, feeling as good as I want to? Why do I have low energy? So that's, this is a reflection tool for you, you for you to use. Um, next one is foods I can't eat. So what are some foods that you can't eat because possibly you have um, um, allergies or you are um, health condition, health condition. Like uh, I know if you're on a, um, you know, certain diet because of uh, like diabetes or any other um, um, ailment, um, but also to what are foods I don't like. So there's sometimes it's like I tried it, but I will never eat it again. So what are those foods you don't like? And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, you know, you tried it and that's something that you just don't like. So what are those things right now? Okay, I'm gonna zoom through here because um, I'm getting tired of talking. I wanna pass it over to Nico here in a little bit. Okay, going to connections. Who is your, who supports my healthy habits? Who supports my healthy habits? Is it your, uh, your, your kids? Is it your, uh, your partner, um, your mom, your dad, things like that? So who supports your healthy habits? Um, so who are those people? You can write them down or you could just put friends. Um, and, uh, and again, why do they want to be um, supportive of you? The next one is support groups, whether it's virtual or physical. If you're on social media, you can go into, um, you know, you can find certain what you're interested in. So whether it's, uh, you know, fitness, whether it's nutrition, whether you're a plant-based person like us, um, you know, there are groups that you, you get tips or you can get support and you could just, you know, share, share posts and things like that. Or when we pre COVID times, you could meet up and talk about these things. So what are those groups that you have? And in the middle, as far as connections, I, oh, I already mentioned that. Okay. Uh, connections. Who does not support my healthy habits? So who does not support my healthy habits? One story in particular, when we go home, people always um, make fun of when we turn, when we, uh, we've been plant-based for going about three years now. And, uh, you know, people is like, you don't eat meat. Why don't you eat meat? I don't know about you're a bad hunter. <laughs> so, you know, and again, we're not, we're not uh, promoting uh, plant-based diets or anything. That, that was a, that's what works for us. Um, and we have our reasons for doing that. But uh, again, there are certain people that, uh, that uh, respect our decision to do that and respect our nutritional needs and habits. But there are other people who kind of like hecklers and because uh, they don't really understand the, uh, the benefits or just our reasons behind it. And, you know, we say, hey, just, just ask us. Don't make fun of us. No, just kidding. And also to the last one, ask for help. So what are those uh, connections? So what the action? action? So we say, man, I got I to gotta lose a, a few pounds or I want to learn how to do this. That thought is in your head, but taking that first step, that action in order to do it. 
So who are those people that you need to ask for help? Making sure that you do it rather than just do on it. Okay, the next one, because of time, I wanna go with community. So this can be plus or minus. There are um, grocery stores. Is there a grocery store near you? Or is it on the other end of, the, um, of town or in your area? Do you have to drive? Is that a drag? Maybe, um, you know, transportation is tough. Um, even, especially now that, you know, taking public transportation and things like that. Also too, walking and biking, is it accessible? Can I walk there? Can I bike there? Um, farmer's markets, do you know where to find farmer's markets? Is it in walking distance or maybe there's none around you? Um, and also too, there's a, uh, on the CDC website, there's a, uh, there's a cool web, uh, part of their website is you can type in, and I can share this as part of when I give my summary uh, to Ihui and give them back to you guys that um, there's far, there's, you put your, web, your, uh, your zip code in there. You type your zip code in there and it'll show you every, all the farmer's markets around your area. It could be in a five mile radius all the way to 20 mile radius. So that's, I feel that that's a pretty cool resource to have, especially um, if, you, if you get uh, SNAP benefits or you get WIC or they, you know, do they pay by credit card? So it gives you a list of all the things that they have to offer. How, how do you pay? And then from there, you can choose where you want to go. So just a little, um, little example of that. Um, space in a garden. Um, is there space in your area that you can, uh, is there a community garden? Maybe you have some space at home, things like that. And also too, what are the community needs? Maybe you, uh, everything's cool in your neighborhood. Maybe you just need, I don't know, uh, a broken light fixed or, you know, to repair the sidewalk. Or the needs are, you know, they, there needs to be more lighting or maybe um, people need to just watch out for one another, things like that. So, so that's how we use the tool in regard to um, this benefits. So, okay, so I am, I got, actually I gotta do one more, uh, one more part of talking. So I'm going to um, stop, share, stop sharing my screen right now and I'm gonna bounce over to my other, uh, my other screen. And then after that, I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, so to Nico. So this is gonna start our uh, indigenizing indigenous foods. So I'll be back. All right, everybody. Can you hear me away? Okay. Is that good? Okay, cool. So again, so going into indigenizing indigenous foods, um, you know, and, and Nico's gonna break it down here in a little bit. So what I want you guys to do, you're gonna stand up. And if you, if you can't stand up right now, that's totally fine. Um, if you participate, you'll probably get extra points for extra bonus points. And you're gonna do a scavenger hunt, okay? I have a list of four items that you're gonna go and find, okay? So again, use this tool if you run meetings or if you um, do certain things within your, your work area that you can bust this out and just have fun with it, okay? So, um, so what you're gonna do now is make sure that you have enough room to move around, okay? Make sure you have enough, and you're gonna find a certain something, okay? And you're gonna run and get it, okay? All right, so make sure, check your area, do a spin. Make sure there's no shoes, no toys, no toddlers laying on the ground. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is, um, you guys can take um, take yourselves out mute off the mute. You guys can do that. Take yourself off mute because it's a, it, it's a lot better when you hear people laugh and. All right, cool. All right, so for right now, just go ahead and uh, go ahead and move your hips around because you're going to be going here in a little bit, all right? Okay. So the first thing you are going to find is a spoon. Go find a spoon. <laughs> spoon, 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 spoon. Hey. All right, Raquel got a spoon. I can't hear him. All right, you got a spoon. Got it. Awesome. <laughs> Huey found a spoon. Go, yep. go. You got a spoon. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everybody looks like they found a spoon. Yvonne, did you find a spoon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on, Yvonne. <laughs> I gotta go downstairs. <laughs> Run! Uh, okay. We're going to the next one. Okay, the next one is go find a water bottle. Water bottles. Okay. Oh, cool. oh like one of those. Okay, yeah, uh, water bottle. That's tea. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't count, right? Good. 
Yes. Okay, next one is go find a vegetable or a fruit. for participating. I got to turn off the other one. We're getting some feedback. Okay. Okay. All right. I think it is, uh, it's about time to hear from my wife. <laughs> I am tired of talking. So I'm going to share my screen again. And thank you very much for participating in that. You can use it if you run meetings in your community, if you do it at work. Um, that's a fun, um, a fun way to just engage people. It's a fun way to, um, you know, just uh, make people move. So in a fun way, the youth like to do it. And uh, I know you guys would participate. So thank you very much. Okay, moving forward. If you can um, go ahead and mute yourself again, that'd be great. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nico. <laughs> that was awesome. You guys are so fast. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about indigenizing indigenous foods. So first of all, indigenous foods basically just means um, food that is grown here, that is from here, uh, our land. Um, I know some things like the pomegranate uh, is not from here. It's from Iran, uh, Middle East. Um, and I'll talk about benefits of uh, pomegranate in a little bit. So basically that's just what that means is food that is grown here because we are of this land. And um, as indigenous people, uh, we were connected more so in history with the land and eating with the seasons and um, food that is grown here, our body, our DNA recognizes. So um, your body wants the water. It wants all the water um, and it wants to eat seasonally. And so I wanna talk about um, Eating seasonally, what is in season right now, um, prepares our body, our DNA, to protect itself. So everything that's in season right now, like your corn, your squash, your pumpkins. I saw everybody, or quite a few people with pumpkins. Um, they're loaded with vitamin C, iron, um, vitamin A. These are all things that are going to help your body protect itself from colds and flus and um, probably sustain you through some winter months where hunting might not have been as prosperous, um, where food was scarce. Um, so most of the time with our indigenous peoples, we have jerky. Um, how many people have had a tonka bar? I mean, that's an indigenous food. If you, if you haven't heard of tonka bar, it's dried buffalo meat mixed with uh, dried fruit. So dried cranberries, dried blueberries. Um, some people call it pemmican. Some people call it uh, wasna. 
Um, but that's an indigenous food and that's supposed to sustain us through winter. Um, lots of people learned how to can, pickle. Um, that's another way to preserve foods from summertime into the winter months where you're in close quarters with everybody. Um, pretty much shelter in place. Most places were um, snowing. Um, so those indigenous foods that are in season, especially apples, pears, um, peppers. Um, what else do I have? Um, those are all gonna boost your immune system. So if you can, um, it's easier to get things that are in season in the grocery stores. Um, it keeps the cost low, so you're gonna save money um, by eating what's in season instead of paying a higher price for imported strawberries. Strawberries are not in season right now and they look kind of gross on the shelf. Uh, we just bought some uh, about a week ago and they were already molded, it was nasty. So <laughs> buy what's in season um, to protect your body and also save you some money. So you can buy a little bit more, let it stretch, go a little bit longer, especially with us with kids. Um, they're always asking for snacks. And so if we have it available out on the table, the apples, the pears, they reach for it, it's there, it's available. Um, even just seeing it constantly, every time you open the fridge, it's like, oh, I should probably eat that instead of, I don't know, whatever unhealthy snack that is kind of your go-to um, that we all have. And um, another thing I wanted to talk about that your body recognizes, especially right now, winter months and with uh, COVID and flu in season right around the corner are herbal teas. Um, so I know a lot of people are doing, oh, oh, well, real quick, I wanted to go back and talk about probably um, if you haven't seen some of the squash that's in the stores right now, aside from a pumpkin, um, you can cook it and eat it. Um, or if you get like food boxes, um, maybe you get an acorn squash and you don't really know what to do with it. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's got a nice little, that's where it was sitting on the ground. You want to have the nice spot. And then, um, so acorn squash is a little sweeter. You can put it in a stew. Um, I usually just bake mine and you're gonna cut it um, lengthwise, I guess. Anyway, so you wanna have the two halves. Thank you, my lovely assistant. So, you, so that's what it looks like. You're gonna cut it in half. So it has these great seeds inside. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a pumpkin inside. And you can toast them and eat them just like pumpkin seeds. You can save them, grow them in your garden. And you have a free, free seeds. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna scrape it out with a spoon until um, all the pulp is out. And you're just gonna add a little bit of uh, whatever oil you use to cook with, olive oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, butter, vegan butter, whatever. And a little bit of cinnamon because it is a sweeter squash and you're just gonna bake it for 30 minutes in the oven, 350 and that's it. And you can scoop it out and eat it. It tastes like pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really great. So um, and then another food that I wanted to talk about is probably a pomegranate. I grew up eating these in the Bay Area. Um, they're really, um, they're really cool. And um, so when you go to pick them in the grocery store, you want them to be heavy. That means it's got a lot of seeds and a lot of, <laughs> yeah. So when you cut it open, it looks like this. They're also called jewel. It's not focusing. There you go. It's, it, it's sometimes called the jewel fruit. They look like little um, rubies inside and um, it's packed with tons of antioxidants and iron and vitamin C. 
and they're pretty much safe for all kinds of diets, whether it's your thyroid, um, high blood pressure, diabetic. Um, and it's just a fun snack for kids. You know, they kind of, they've got the little hands and fingers, they can get in there and um, pick it. So that's what's in season right now as far as foods. If you haven't experimented with it, it's super easy to open and um, so that's what I wanted to mention. And then the other thing right now for, um, <coughs> sorry, um, cold and flu season are the teas. And so um, what I really like is nettle. I have nettle tea. It um, kind of tastes like hay. It smells like hay. Um, just drink it. It's got vitamin C. And um, another one is dandelion root. I didn't know that dandelion root is an indigenous plant. The dandelion is indigenous to North America. And um, my whole life, I thought it was a weed. I've heard everybody say, get that out of the garden. It's going to take over everything. It's a super food and it's got um, iron, vitamin C. It's um, great for kids uh, during cold and flu season. Um, it's going to help relieve muscle aches and improve your liver health. It's going to give you some energy. Also, if you're feeling a little sluggish, the day's kind of gray. Um, so dandelion root tea is kind of a catch-all for everything cold and flu season. And then, um, you know, you don't have to be fancy. We've got these at the dollar store and these are um, just loose tea steepers. Um, if you want to go and invest in a pot, a teapot, um, it's got like a mesh, you know, insert. So it wasn't very expensive, probably 10 bucks. Um, and then also we have our, um, our Pueblo tea, our indigenous, you can even use, uh, some people call it Navajo tea. Um, Don't say that. <laughs> so, um, you know, just talk with your traditional people, people in your tribe, whatever you guys used, um, uh, whatever's available right now. Um, those are the main ones that we use, but for the most part, um, you know, ask your nutritionist. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, just going back to DNA, um, your body recognizes it, it and it wants it. And um, so the benefits of going back to um, that relationship with yourself, um, eating those foods and experimenting with your family, um, maybe bringing it or sharing a recipe with people, you know, kind of bringing your community into what you're doing, um, you know, that helps support yourself. And um, that's another part of being healthy. So when you feel supported by those around you, you feel supported by the food that you're eating, you feel healthier, that's gonna be a total wellness package from head to toe, inside out and um, get the water in for sure. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so thank you. Now I have to get the camera over to me. Okay. <laughs> we have some questions here. Would you be able to assist? Uh, they were wondering where they can order, especially the jerky bar, the Tonka bars. Yeah. Um, I know Whole Foods carries them. Um, I'm not sure about Sprouts. Um, you can also go to uh, tonkabar.com. Uh, they have a Facebook page. They have an Instagram. They have Twitter. Uh, anywhere on social media with links 
to them. Uh, but basically, tonkabar.com, you can order in bulk um, from their website. Wonderful. They also asked uh, in regards to teas, what do you suggest ordering and what is better, green or black? You're going to want green. Black is going to have a lot of caffeine and um, these teas are strictly herbal, so they have no caffeine. Oh, and where to order them? You can get them from Whole Foods, Sprouts. Uh, most of your uh, regular grocery stores uh, carry them in the tea and coffee aisle. Or you can go to my mom's house and uh, pick them from her backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, thank you very much for your questions. We appreciate it. All right, we're gonna move forward with um, being real with yourself during COVID-19. So what does that mean? And um, so again, going back to um, why we're doing this. So we're pretty much just taking you through a journey. And again, we're, we're sharing some tools with you to reflect on yourselves. Um, because, you know, with everything, with, when it comes to wellness, it's basically a reflection of ourselves. Where are we right now? And, when it, and especially with, um, you know, people who get, uh, who get uh, stressed out about, man, I can't, I can't run as fast as I used to. Or I can't lift as much as I want to when it comes to physical wellness. And I think the same thing with us. Our bodies change, and that's, that's inevitable. We are going to get – we're getting older. We're getting wiser. Um, but I feel that, uh, you know, when it comes to that, we have to remind ourselves, where are we at? Um, and start from there. Everybody's bodies works differently. Everybody's, um, you know, has their different likes and things like that. When it comes to time, you know, everybody has different lives. So, um, so this big thing and going back to the, uh, the title is being real with yourself during COVID-19. We are living in a time of uncertainty, of challenge. We've seen that when it comes to the lockdowns, as far as, you know, our eating habits have changed our, um, you know, the way we um, interact with one another, has, one another has changed. We're staying home as, um, you know, as we're staying home more, um, which is fine because we, we, we're safe and, uh, you know, just uh, taking precautions for our own family and ourselves as well. So the way I want to take you through this is, again, going back to that, uh, the title is being real with yourself during COVID-19, taking a step back. So first of all, remind yourself, why are you eating the way you're eating? So why are you eating the way you're eating? as far as um, how do you wanna be healthy? What does that mean to you? And I think everybody has their different definition of what healthy means. And that's totally fine because again, we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different communities and we, do all, um, we don't like the same things. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's a given. Um, also too, is that we use the, the value of reflection. So value of reflection is very important. No matter if you want change in your life, you need to, in your, if you want change in your life, you need to take a step back and reflect on those. How is my life right now? We're not always gonna be the same. You know, our jobs change, or we, maybe you move to a different community, whether, um, you know, uh, whether there's some things in your life, maybe you got diagnosed with something, maybe you have an injury, things like that. So it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And that reflection that I just showed you, that's my day, that was my day yesterday. So a week from now, that's going to change. Maybe I'm eating breakfast at six o'clock in the morning, things like that. So this is just a tool for you guys to use to reflect. So the biggest thing about COVID-19 when it comes to eating and um, uh, anything that you consume is budgeting. So uh, Nico and I took a uh, basic financial um, uh, class about a month ago. And one of the things that we did, uh, we were required to do was a budget. So by raise of hands, who's done a budget within the past month? Raise your hand. Anybody, anybody? Raquel, you are on it. Good job. Yeah, so, so budgeting for me, as I check my account. As long as I have money in there, we are good. So I don't pay attention to, you know, well, yeah, I do pay attention to what I spend, but not into full detail. So that doing that exercise of really budgeting, where is your money going? Even though you may have uh, money in the bank, but also too, it's nice to see where you're going um, which direction you're going um, and how, what, how are you using your funds. And we found out that we spent um, X amount of, um, I spent like, uh, when I was going to work, I spent at least six to $7, even $10 of, on coffee a day. Going to work, going to, there's a place called Badass Coffee here in um, New Mexico. And um, they have my favorite coffee, Kona Coffee. So it's, a, it's like eight bucks per uh, a large cup, which is totally worth it. And I would get a little snack. So 
that's like, you know, if you multiply that for like a whole month, that's, you know, that's some change. I could, you know, invest that and send our kids to college or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so budgeting. So where is your money going? You know, what are the foods that are, you know, that can get, you can get the bang for your buck. So, you know, it, especially now that as many times as you go to the refrigerator, I go X amount of times a day. So what are those things that you want to invest in? And this comes with um, being able to come up with a plan and what are some of your research? So what is the plan, you know, planning out those meals, planning out, you know, what on our next um, grocery run, where are we going to go? We should go over here because their produce is a lot less. Maybe we should go over here because, you know, um, you know, all of those factors play a role in your plan and doing your research. So, and that's the reason why I asked that question is that looking at your community, what's in walking distance, you know, can you get everything that you need nutritionally in your area? Or do you have to go venture off and um, you know take a a a, uh, a small a short drive to get what you need? So what are those things in your community? So those are some things to to reflect on in uh, when it comes to your budget. So budgeting for anything is very important. That's something I I have a struck I struggle with that. And just to be real, I struggle with that. But um, Nico is better with um, budgeting and finances than me. So she's my saving grace when it comes to that. So, you know, if you need help, there are people out there um, that understand that, that can give you uh, tips. But again, um, again, we can uh, just email us that we can show you what, you know, what works for us as well in regard to what we eat. Again, our, our price tags is going to look a little different. Where we go, where we shopping is going to be a little different, but we can share those tricks of uh, those, the trade with you. And uh, going back to, uh, you know, basically what you like. Um, also to communicate. So anything, anything in your life you're changing that you need to communicate get. You need to stick with your guns. You need to say, no, I'm not going to eat that. Or no, hey, those are my kids. Don't feed them that. So, uh, so when it comes to that is, you know, basically communicating what you need and what you want. Um, especially if you're if you live with your family or if you live with your partners, um, anything like that is that you know if you want to make a healthy lifestyle, uh, health life change, um, lifestyle change in your life, then you need to communicate that. So this is you know this is my goal and this is how you can support me, and that's where those um, the connections come into play. Who supports you and who doesn't? You know what is your um, how far are you going to go to make those uh, those changes? And change can be tough. Yes, change can be very tough, but at the same time, you know, making that decision, yes, I want this for myself, and this is the way I'm going to do that. These are the, my support systems that are in place. These are the people that I can count on to keep me in, uh, keep me in check, things like that. But also to acknowledge that those, those barriers are those challenges that may pop up in your life, but make sure that it's, you're, it's easy to communicate those, uh, those needs and those wants, okay? And also to communicate, if you have families, um, even grown-ups said, okay, we're going to uh, limit our uh, sweet and sugary beverage uh, uh, consumption to, you know, one can a day, uh, things like that. Or I'm not going to um, use uh, sugar in my coffee for a week, things like that. So, you know, starting out small, it doesn't have to be drastic. But those are the things that, uh, that are needed in order to make those changes, especially nutritionally wise. Um, and the last thing is celebrate. So celebrate your little successes, celebrate your big successes. It's saying like, I have more energy because I'm eating these foods or I'm eating, having more energy because I'm not eating these foods. Also too, I tried a new food, you know, splash that on social media. I had no SSBs for a week. I lost five pounds because I, I changed X this in my life. Or also too, what, this is a new recipe I tried. You should try it. And also, too, if you and your family cook together, that is a win in any household rather than, you know, whether it's um, whether it's mom or dad or grandma cooking that everybody do it, um, do something to, you know, feed everybody. Because going back, um, the indigenous way of, of living is being able to feast, being able to celebrate those things. And in my community, when, um, you know, um, they tell us that it's a good time if you want to teach your kids something, whether it's just conversation, how was your day? How are you feeling and laughing and, uh, you know, uh, telling jokes, things like that. That's medicine because when you eat that, when you consume that food, those blessings and those positive vibes are going into your body. So that's, again, as far as indigenous eating, that's something to think about as well. So another thing too, is um, any suggestions and or 
whether you found something cool about a food or a drink or something like that is that did you know splash it on social media support one another uplift one another and that's the only way that we're going to we are going to share the love and we're going to uh, learn from one another so um so moving forward look at those cute kids <laughs> So again, why are we doing this? Why are we saying this? So you've heard of building financial wealth. You've heard of investing in stocks and bonds, uh, investing in your business, things like that. But what we want you to think about, how are you investing in yourself, building generational wellness? And like my shirt says, health is wealth. What is your wealth? How are you gonna be wealthy? Because you know, living, living to your uh, 100 years old, maybe that's not a goal for you. Maybe it's as long as you want to live, uh, feel good about yourself. You want to get out of bed with no aches and pains. You want to be able to be healthy. You want to be able to do all these things is how are you building that right now? And that's the, the beauty of reflection is that you take a step back and say, okay, well, actually, these are my kids, the two on the left. Uh, my daughter's in the middle, my son's to the right. And the, uh, the girl on the left is one of, my, um, one of my good friends, his daughter. So look at these kids. They may reflect your nephews, your nieces, your sons, your daughters, or what have you, wherever you're at. So that's building generational wealth. Because what you do, in, what you put in your mouth, what you're drinking, how you treat one another, how you shop, these little kids, those eyes are looking at you. And that's something as a parent that I learned, um, no matter, they're going to say, because one, uh, one of my pitches I always say is that um, kids, will, kids will say what they hear and kids will do what they see. So if you are eating healthy, if you are, you know, um, you know treating other people well, or you are doing X, Y, Z, they're going to reflect that. Because we learned so far that my son's going to pick up anything that he watches on TV and say it. So luckily he doesn't watch um, a lot of uh, TV, but, uh, but the, it's just funny what they pick up. So they're going to pick up those habits. They're going to pick up those, um, those, uh, those habits, those good habits. But also, too, you want them to treat each other well. You want them to treat either, each, their community well, as, um, too. So if you are making those decisions, not only for yourself, but these little kids and also anybody in your household. So be a good example for those around you. And again, it's not, it's not going to be, if you're starting from ground zero, it's going to be a little tough, but it, you know, just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. You don't have to take on the whole mountain by itself, you know, just basically, you know, chipping away at those, um, at the, uh, at the rocks and you come up with pebbles and you, Soon enough, you're going to have a whole mountain for yourself because you've uh, made those small sacrifices for yourself and for your communities as well. So, so think about that. We are building generational health. And you can say to yourself, I am building generational health, our wellness, by doing this. Whatever you want to do, whatever that looks like to your eyes, whatever you want, you are building generational wellness. So going, going off of that, so I use this, um, pit, this last picture, it's in uh, the Sandia Mountains, and um, I do presentations for uh, national organizations and um, national uh, groups of people, and this is something that I like to share. No matter how educated people are, no matter where they're at, if they're native, if they're non-native, things like that. So everybody takes risks in our life. Everybody takes risks. It could be scary, yes. It could be different. It could be, you know, all of these things that we are fearful for fearful of is that when you take you're on this rock right now and I'm jumping that that um, that gap can be huge and but it starts with just jumping so literally I thought I was gonna smash my face on that other rock on this picture but you know I just wanted a cool shot but uh, so the so thinking behind this is that you are making these decisions that you never thought you would make in your life we have to wear masks we have to wear, you know, sanitize all the time. We have to stay away from people. We have to do all of these things in order to stay safe. And, you know, it's all in regard to taking care of ourselves, taking care of our families. And whatever changes you want in your life, whether pre-COVID, COVID now, or 10 years from now, is that you're going to take a risk and you're going to want change in your life. It may be difficult. You, don't, you may not know how to do that. You might not have the support that you need. But you making that jump, is that's, a, that's the start. And if you land, awesome. If you fall down, get back up. What can I do better? Who do I need to support me? 
And uh, so the main thing about, um, about living, about parenting is that nobody's perfect. Our lives are changing. We're getting older, you know, different dynamics change. Um, and um, no, nobody's always positive. And that's something that, that I had to learn as well. Um, as a father is that we're gonna uh, we're gonna fall we're going to do all these things but the main thing is that you're still moving forward you're learning from your your mistakes you're learning from your positives but also too the main thing that I want you guys to realize is that whatever knowledge you pick up whatever gifts positive vibes you get from people make sure to share that make sure to share that with your community your family because that's the only way we are gonna get well and build these well um, our communities um, help them prosper and thrive. So, so with that, um, I just wanted to uh, thank you very much for your time, your energy, but just being here. You being here is making a difference. You being here, uh, you know, makes our lives a lot, uh, you know, a lot more blessed. Um, so even though it's virtual, that um, that you guys. Uh, are living your lives right now in the way, best way that you can. And we're just here to provide tools. We're, we have our own struggles right now. We're having our own um, uh, imbalances right now because of COVID-19, but this is something that we just wanted to share with you. This is something that we've oh, learned from our okay. community, okay? So I'm gonna give it um, to, uh, pass it over to Nico so she can give some uh, closing words and then uh, we'll close it up. <laughs> Yeah, so I just want to reiterate uh, what Buster said. Uh, we're very thankful for this opportunity. We're glad that you guys came and participated. And, um, you know, we have lots of information to give. We have lots of information to learn. We'd love to hear, you know, what you guys have encountered as far as COVID and challenges. And we want you to know that we support you. We're here as a resource. Yes. And next week we will be here. So not the same presentation. So make sure that you wear something that you can move in so you can groove in that, uh, you know, if you have uh, youngsters in the house, this will be something for them to do as well. Because again, the gentleman that was here, uh, Denoria, thank you very much for sharing your son with us. Um, you know, in and granted too that everything that we do, we have a family. So, you know, everything that we say that we project is something that uh, kids can come to. Um, things. Um, so if you have family, uh, tell them about it. We'll be talking about, you know, uh, family fitness and the way we do it, but also to some helpful tips how to do this. So just a heads up, we'll be utilizing the uh, self connections and community uh, tool as well. So how does that uh, play a role in physical wellness and um, you being able to make sure that you're, you're uh, boosting your movement in your life. So but with that, you know, we uh, want to send you off in a good way. So, um, Gume, as we say in our community, uh, be strong. May the force be with you. And positive vibes goes out to us, our kids in the back room, warm hugs, lots of love. And again, we are family, indigenized, thrive. So stay positive and stay active. And please, if you have any questions, um, um, we have our, um, just send us an email or what have you. We'll feel free to, you know, we'll, we'll get back right, right back at you. Um, visit our website at familyindigenizedthrive.org. And um, Ihui, um, we'll pass it on. I'll give him a summary of the presentation today, um, along with some other resources that you can check out. So with that, thank you very much. Hey, so a community, we usually say, uh, for those who attend our workshops, we're deeply grateful and and full of that positive energy and the love uh, in our workshops we usually practice using our hand gestures and when we say we're worthy we say we're worthy when we say our community is worthy you're worthy and if we're all worthy we say we're all worthy so right now we'd love to send you that uh, all of our love and appreciation that you're worthy hey <laughs> so with that i just wanted to you know on behalf of our our community here in San Jose and all the communities have joined us throughout California and throughout uh, other states. Uh, you know, uh, we want to, you know, express, you know, gratitude for the tools that you've shared, uh, especially in context with, you know, during COVID-19. We appreciate your, your knowledge, your, your lived experience, and more importantly, um, your inspiration, uh, especially, you know, 
uh, as you stated, the importance of generational wellness, and, and it's really beautiful to see families speaking to families. And that's something that we really appreciate. From the bottom of our, of our planning committee, we want to express gratitude. Um, and so as, as uh, uh, Buster and Nico shared, I'm just going to share two last slides just to see what we're going to be um, covering here before we close. So as I stated next week, don't forget to join us. It's going to be uh, lots of fun. Please let your, uh, your loved ones know uh, if there's any uh, relatives that are available that day. Uh, please have them uh, register on that link, and we'll be happy to email them our, our Zoom link. Uh, or if they can meet you at your house, um, you know, whatever's safe uh, for, for you, um, we'd be happy to have them. And we're also going to have a raffle. And so for some reason, I'd be able to share. But um, so I kept a track of all of our participants who've been participating today and also who actually attended today. So you're automatically going to be included in a raffle. So, um, so don't worry about that. So next uh, Wednesday, I'll let you know who won. I'll send an email uh, to tomorrow. Uh, with the winner and uh, we'll keep you posted. So thank you for your participating and taking healthy risks. We're very grateful. It's a good way because uh, you know, we're doing our best to create a safe environment. I know we have relatives from out of the community, um, but we want to make sure you feel welcome and that we're doing our best to, you know, to create that, that safe space and, and to have fun and to really enjoy that. And so thank you everybody for joining us. We also have some staff from Indian Health Center here today. I just want to thank uh, Raquel Santos for joining us and Eminem. I want to thank Katerina uh, and her family, Yvonne, Brock, and family. I want to thank Vanessa Gutierrez for joining us. Thank you very much. I want to thank Yvette Pingham. Pinkham, Pinkham. Uh, we want to thank uh, Bernadine Silva. I want to thank Jasmine Gutierrez, the Denoris family, Ismael. Uh, I want to thank Delia. Uh, and Ruben Vargas, um, Michael Duran, all of us for joining us. We want to thank you. Uh, so, you know, before we close, um, we're going to ask uh, our, our one of our community elders, uh, Delia, if she can assist us in transitioning from and kind of gathering, harnessing this beautiful energy that was created today in this love and for the blessings that Nico and, and Buster and family provided for us. Okay, Delia, it's all you. Okay. Hi, thank you again for this opportunity. And I just like to thank um, Grandma again for bringing us together and keeping us safe and that we continue to monitor what we need to monitor to stay safe and keep those who have passed away in our prayers continue to take care of our children and embrace them and keep safe in this community uh -huh. oh oh thank you so much Delia and ernie thank you for for gracing us with your your prayer and um everyone here we send good thoughts to to you uh wherever you're at uh thank you for joining us thank you anisita for providing hospitality for me this wonderful uh, warm home we'll see you soon um next wednesday same time same bat channel <laughs> <laughs>